So the parts that I'm using are a kit from CP3D Printing. This is the Sword of Perseus. Now I have two options for the handle and crossbar. I'm going to be using the version without the decorations because that's going to lend itself better to being cast in carbon fiber later on. The blade is in three parts, so these do need to be attached together. First, I'm removing some material from the seam lines so that the gap will be easier to fill later on. I'm also taking down that gloss on those flat surfaces so the glue will adhere better. There's a channel running the length of all of the pieces so that a dowel can be inserted. So this I'm going to glue in place using Gorilla Glue, which will expand to help fill in any gaps. And I'm not going to add on the handle and cross piece to this because I'm going to create three separate molds for the sword. It's going to be much easier to cast them in carbon fiber later on with the parts separate. And I did make sure that the glue was spread onto the flat surfaces also, so that it would stick together the parts to each other in addition to adhering them to the dowel. This is going to give us the best level of stability. I'm adding a couple of clamps to hold these pieces level with each other and in place while the glue cures. There are some print lines that need to be filled in, and then I'm also going to fill in the detailing that's left on the cross piece and at the base of the pommel there, because those aren't going to transfer well into the molding and casting process. So I'm just going to fill all of those in with some wood filler. This is very quick drying, so you do have to work fairly fast, and then just do small sections, allow it to dry fully, and then you can just add on more layers if it wasn't built up quite enough. But of course, this is also the time to fill in that seam line between each of the sword blade parts. This particular filler is rather strong, so you want to use it with good ventilation, but it does dry quickly, which is a plus for adding multiple layers quickly um, and not having to wait a whole day for it to dry. Pretty much by the time you finish one piece and come back around to it after finishing the other pieces, you can go ahead and add the second coat right away because it only takes about 15 minutes for that to be cured enough to add another layer. And I am overbuilding the seams because you need something to sand down to reach that level. It's still going to be a process of multiple layers, but it's a good head start if you do overbuild those areas a little bit. Now I've sanded this flat I'm using a sanding block on all of these areas because that's the only way it's really going to get flatted out. The wood filler and the plastic sand at different rates, so it's especially important to ensure you're using a flat surface to sand, not just freehanding it. Another plus of using the wood filler is that it is very easy to sand. I also reinforce the tip of the sword to make sure that I get a good clean line on that. Once I had done a couple of layers of the wood filler, I added a coat of filler primer. This will, for one, help to fill in additional gaps, but it also helps to reveal what areas need additional filling. Of course, removing the dust between coats so that your primer is going to adhere well to the plastic. I did several coats of the wood filler, primer, different colors of the primer, and then just sanding with the flat surface. 
and that primer does tend to gum up the sandpaper quite a bit, so if you just brush it away, you can extend the life of your sandpaper somewhat. And it is helpful to use a couple of different colors of the primer, just so you can see how deep you're sanding each time. Those coats of primer do help to make it more obvious anywhere that needs some serious filling with the wood filler, and then it also will over the course of several layers, smooth out the print lines on the rest of the sword. It's quite a process, it takes quite a few layers, so you just have to keep going back and forth between the filler and the various colors of primer until it is flatted out and your print lines are gone and that seam isn't coming back through. After all of the sanding and filling, I've added a coat of black paint and some gloss sealer. And then of course that does need to cure for a couple of days to ensure that it's not going to have any sort of bonding issues when we go to create the fiberglass mold from that. But there's a rough assembly of the parts and it's not absolutely perfect, but it is close enough that we're gonna be able to polish down the finished mold to get it to that perfect finish once we go to cast the parts. We're gonna keep those separate and create a flange for each of the individual parts. So I'm using a mix of foam and corrugated plastic. This model does have a blunted blade, which I wanna go ahead and make that a sharp blade. So I'm using clay uh, in addition to recessing the part deep into the flange. So I'm just gonna build that up and create a sharpened edge and ensure that the resin isn't going to seep under and that the mold will release. The clay gets a little bit messy, so you just have to clean up and repolish your part after the border is all in place around all of the edges. I follow the same process for each of the parts, cutting a piece out of foam and then adding a coroplast piece on top, which is going to make it easier to release the parts. Once I have the parts trimmed to shape, then I'm using some packing tape to secure them to each other so they're easier to work with and trimming out any excess material as necessary to ensure that the parts fit down into the flange. I'm using more clay to build that up so that I have just half of the part showing above. That's going to be my cut line once I cast a part from these molds. So it does need to be as level and smooth as possible. It's gonna make it easier down the road. With the clay in place and everything cleaned up, it's time to add some release wax. 
So this takes quite a few coats. I ended up doing probably around 10 coats just to make sure that these are going to release properly and also just to help fill in any possible imperfections on each of these parts. Just spread it on and let it set up and then polish it down. Give it about half an hour between coats. I also did a coat of PVA, again, just to ensure that I get a good release. With all the prep work done, I'm adding the black surface coat. This is a thickened epoxy, so it's going to capture the detail and create a glossy surface that will be good for casting parts later on. I've applied two coats of the surfacing epoxy. Now it cured a little faster than expected, so it was no longer tacky when I went to add the fiberglass. So I did key the surface with some coarse sandpaper before moving on to the additional layers of fiberglass. I'm starting out with lighter weight fiberglass and trimming relief cuts as needed to fit it to the shape. Each layer gets wetted out before moving on to the next layer. I'm using a variety of weights for the fiberglass and gradually building this out so that it's going to end up being a rigid mold. The fiberglass layers are progressively heavier to bulk out the mold and ensure that it's going to be rigid and not deform when it, the parts are under vacuum when we're casting them later on. And depending on the type of fiberglass, various levels of relief cuts are needed. Some conform better than others. Also the more complex shapes require a bit of finagling to ensure that the fiberglass covers all of the parts and all of the recessed areas are properly reinforced. One of the layers is a heavyweight chop strand mat, so this should hopefully ensure that the mold is thick enough and built out enough that it's not going to have too much torque to it or deform once it's in a vacuum bag when we're trying to cast it in carbon fiber later on. It does take a bit of effort to get this wetted out because it is so thick. These parts are fairly complex in some portions though, so you really can't conform that particular type to the shape, so I just used some strips. Uh, around the flange area and over top to add some rigidity there. Originally I wasn't intending to cure this under vacuum, but this chop strand ended up being so thick that I didn't want to press down. It kept wanting to pop up and I didn't want to have voids there, so I did end up placing these items into a vacuum bag for a while just to compress that a bit and ensure that there weren't voids under the edges of the chop strand. I added a final layer of a lighter weight 
fiberglass over top of the chop strand to press down those fibers that are kind of sticking out everywhere and just smooth that out so we get a bit of a nicer surface that's not going to be uh, as prone to giving you splinters. The molds should be all cured now. I'm removing that release film that I had added when I placed it into the vacuum bag. So let's go ahead and see if these can be removed properly and see what sort of surface we have underneath. The next step is to get the mold parts cleaned up, remove all of the rough edges on the flange, and fix any imperfections that may be on the mold because we don't want those to transfer to the cast parts. So once the cleanup is done, it's going to be time to cast the sword in carbon fiber and see how we can fit all of these parts together. So that's going to be part two for this series. Mm -hmm.